In this module, we will discuss the concept of pattern matching in the Asterisk Dial Plan. Pattern matching allows the Asterisk Administrator to create a single extension in the Dial Plan that can dynamically match multiple dialed extensions. Imagine a PBX that has 100 sequential DIDs and how cumbersome it would be to create a unique extension for each one of them. With pattern matching, you can create a single extension that matches all of the incoming numbers. Pattern matching is a powerful tool for helping to manage a complex dial plan. It's important to get the syntax just right when creating a pattern, because Asterisk can only do exactly what it's told. We'll now cover the syntax rules for pattern matching in the dial plan. All patterns begin with the underscore character. If the underscore character is not present, then Asterisk will not treat the extension as a pattern, and instead will treat it like a literal extension with exactly one match. In order for pattern matching to be useful, we need characters that stand for a range of other characters. Several of these are listed here. The X is most commonly used. It stands for any digit from 0 to 9. Z is any digit from 1 to 9, meaning it excludes 0. N is any digit from 2 to 9, meaning it excludes 0 and 1. These reserved characters are not case sensitive, so you can use either upper or lower case when expressing a pattern. However, using uppercase characters is the common convention. In addition to the reserved characters of X, Z, and N, you can express a custom range for matching by using the character and character ranges inside of square brackets. Ranges are specified with a dash between the edges of the range. In this example, 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are matched. 2-9 in square brackets would be another way of expressing the same range as the reserved character n. Of course, an underscore must always precede the pattern. The dot character is a wildcard which matches anything remaining or any additional input at least one character long. For example, underscore 9011 dot matches anything that starts with 9011 but does not match 9011 itself because there's nothing after the second one. The exclamation point is another wildcard used as a shortcut when no other matches are possible. This may be used as an else case to send a call to a logical destination when the dial digits do not match an existing pattern. This could perhaps route the call to an operator, or bypass an attempt at least cost routing by sending the call out our default trunk. In this dial plan example, a pattern starting with 1256 and having seven more digits after it will go to the main IVR. The underscore X exclamation point pattern is there to catch extensions that don't match the first pattern. This could be any extension that doesn't start with 1, or any extension that has fewer than 11 characters in the first pattern. Or basically, any extension at all that doesn't match the first pattern. It's used as a catch-all to send the extension to an operator. In a production environment, it's not uncommon for there to be numerous pattern matching extensions. This means that a particular dialed number may match more than one extension perhaps a literal match in one pattern, or even two or more different patterns. Therefore, it's important to understand the sort order Asterisk uses when looking up a dialed extension. Asterisk scans the dial plan digit by digit from left to right. When more than one extension in the dial plan matches, Asterisk will pick the most specific match. A literal match matches ahead of a pattern specifying a range in brackets, while a range between 1 and 7 characters matches ahead of N, because N matches 8 characters and isn't very specific. Z matches 9 characters and is even less specific, so it matches after N. X matches 10 characters, so it's less specific than Z. The dot wildcard is the least specific match, so it won't match unless there's no other match possible. This can be a little confusing, so we'll sum it up as simply as possible. When using patterns in the dial plan, always make them as specific as possible to avoid accidentally matching on the wrong pattern. When in doubt, you can run dial plan show followed by a context name to see the order that asterisk will match the dialed extensions. For example, here we have two pattern matches, a literal extension, and another pattern match configured in extensions.conf. To see what the sort order for this context is, we can run dial plan show example underscore context on the asterisk CLI. The results show the literal extension appears first in the sort order, followed by the pattern matches in order of specificity. Likewise, if you'd like to test what the sort order for a specific extension will be, you can run dial plan show on the asterisk CLI for that extension. This will return all of the extensions that match the specified extension, showing the order in which asterisk will match against them. 
Note that 6199 matches all of the extensions in this context. In this style plan, we use the predefined channel variable called extend. It contains the value of the specific extension in the dial plan that is currently being executed on the channel. If we dial 6199, the third extension down will be executed, and we'll hear the digits 6199 play back for us. If we dial 6198, the second extension down will be executed, and we'll hear instead 6198. The extend variable never refers to the pattern because it stores the value of what was actually dialed. Extend is very commonly used with pattern matching to keep dial plans small. Using pattern matching, you can have relatively few extensions listed while using dial plan expressions and the go-to family of applications to maintain the flexibility and power of dynamic call routing. We'll see just how to do this in the upcoming Advanced Dial Plan chapter. We've previously mentioned that it's a best practice to explicitly end a call by calling the hang-up application when you're done with it. One of the main reasons for doing this is to prevent unintended behavior resulted from unexpected pattern matches. Look at this example. Extension 6199 plays back a greeting and then hangs up. The other extension is a pattern that matches any four-digit extension that begins with 6. Of course, 6199 matches that pattern. The hang-up priority on the literal 6199 extension makes sure that the call is ended appropriately. But what would happen if the hang-up weren't there? After executing priority 1 of extension 6199, Asterisk will look for priority 2 of a matching extension. Because there's no literal 6199 priority 2, it looks for an extension with a matching pattern that has a priority 2. In this example, it finds the dial to SIP slash phone dash 1 in the 6XXX pattern. That's almost certainly not what you want, and can lead to serious problems. The dial could have used an expensive trunk, or it could have been an application to execute a database lookup of an account balance, or any number of other types of privileged information or access. So make sure you hang up each of your extensions. You should now be familiar with how to express patterns in the asterisk dial plan and understand the benefits and mechanics of using pattern matches. We've covered the reserved characters used to construct pattern matches and how asterisk sorts extensions, as well as describing the extend variable and clarifying why hanging up your extensions is important. Next, we'll proceed on to discuss context includes as our ability to construct elaborate dial plans continues to grow.